Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Sam's Doing Stuff. What am I doing today? Well, I am going to do some tests. I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of my old mower, the Kubota BX 2380, and my new mower, the Toro 4000 Series HDX Pro XL. Yeah, now we already know this is faster, but I want to find out exactly how much faster. So I brought my brother in. Chris, you want to jump on the mower? Now, Chris is a professional landscaper. Landscaper? Landscaper. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I he will is... landscape and nay anything you need. That's right. Uh, so you've driven one of these a few times. Yeah, uh, not one uh, quite a, with a deck this size, but yes. Yeah, uh, now, but you do have a laser Z, so you're familiar with the speed and the handling. Yep, yep. Got you're not going to turf up my lawn. No, I, I will try. I will try not to. We'll see how fast this baby is. Well, the challenge is going to be we're going to go all the way down to the street, which is a good 300 feet, and then we're going to come back. We're going to go down and back again. So we're going to make two laps, basically. We are not going to run the blades, and there's a reason for that. The Kubota uses a lot of its own power to run the blades, and I suppose this does too. But I want to give the Kubota every chance it has. So I'm not going to have us run the blades. <laughs> We're just going to go down on the power of the motor and back and go as fast as we can. Now, you're ready to mow, yeah, right? I'm ready to go. I guess I better go you get the tractor. Just roll this baby out of the garage and fire her up. Yeah, I guess I better go get the tractor. I'll be back. Oh, but wait. You took your mower deck off your tractor. Now you've got to put it back on before you can start. <sighs> I'm back. Well, you could have mowed the whole yard in the time it took me to do that. I grabbed some breakfast, a cup of coffee. I feel well rested. I think I'm ready to go. Took a nap in that seat. Yeah, it's comfortable. I'm guessing your seat's a little more comfortable than mine. Yeah, yeah That's not what this is about. We are going to race. Are you ready? I'm ready. Gentlemen, start your engines.
I'd say you won. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was like Michael Phelps against a high school swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to check the time to see exactly how much you won by, but it was a full <laughs> length. Full length. I, I mean, I had time to turn around and think about it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. Well, there's your speed test. On to the next one. All right, our next comparison test is going to be cut quality. Now, this grass has grown a week, and it's at the perfect height, ready to be cut. The mowers are set up both with their shoot protectors or guards or whatever you want to call them. The shields are going to be down. But that's, that's, that's the way they're intended to be run, okay? I could put them both up and try and spread the clippings, which is typically what I would do anyway, but I want to see what kind of windrows they make with their shields down because that's the safest way and that's the recommended way to do it. Also, mower deck height. You know, mower deck height on two different brands is like buying women's clothing sizes. It, two different brands never match. So I'm measuring them with a tape measure to make sure that both from the blade, both heights are exactly the same. Also, we're gonna go about the same speed. I know that the Toro we just found out can go a whole lot faster than the BX, but to keep as consistent as possible, I'm gonna try and match speed with each one of them. Let's go ahead and get a cut. We're gonna go all the way down and all the way back and see what it looks like. Okay, so as we check this, I mean, it's excellent. Absolutely excellent. I do notice there are some clippings. You know, I mowed and shot it one direction and then recut the clippings just like I would normally. And it did leave a little bit on the top there, but it's not bad. Okay, now we're looking at the Toro and the blade tip speed. I mean, it's just, 18,500 feet per second. There's some clippings, a little bit, a little bit. You know, you just cannot beat that blade speed, 18,500 feet per second. It's going to make less wind rows and it's going to cut those clippings into smaller pieces. Now I wanna let everybody know at this point, I am not biased about these machines. I own them both. And I'm not trying to justify my purchase for either one. I'm just trying to give you information so that if you're trying to decide on what machine you want to buy for whatever purpose you might have, you'll be more informed. So now we're talking capability and terrain. I have mowed this drainage ditch with this BX several times. No problem whatsoever. Four wheel drive and low range will do a lot for a machine. area right here it just plows right through it no problem now let me show you what happened when I tried to do that with the Toro
So it's pretty obvious who beats who when it comes to rough terrain and stuff like that. The tractor, the BX, with four wheel drive and low range can get through much harder obstacles than this Toro Zero Turn will ever be able to do. That being said, on hillsides, now I don't have any wheel spacers or anything on this tractor, but on hillsides, the Toro does way better. It's got a wider stance, lower center of gravity, and it just feels way more comfortable to ride. You don't have that pucker factor that you get from the BX because they are prone to tipping over. Now we're gonna talk comfort, and let me tell you, I wish this were a tie because this seat on this Toro, oh my goodness, it is so comfortable and it absorbs all the rough terrain and all the bumps and bounces. It's just night and day better than the BX. And I don't want them to be. I want my tractor to be just as comfortable as my lawnmower. But Kubota, this is really just a manufacturer's problem, really. If Kubota offered a replacement seat for the Kubota BX, do you know how much money they would make? I would easily spend $500, $600 on a suspension seat like that has. There's just, there's no give. And this is a five-year-old tractor, so these springs back here, they've, they've pretty much gotten all the spring out of their sprung or sprung out of their, they're just not as comfortable as they could be. Now let's talk fuel economy. This Kubota BX2380 has a three-cylinder diesel engine producing 23 horsepower with a six-gallon tank. The Toro has a 35 horsepower gasoline engine and its tank holds 10 gallons. Now, like I said, I've owned this Kubota BX for five years now and I have mowed with it every single year. So I know how much fuel this will use. Mowing this entire property, it will take, in the four and a half hours it takes to mow this property, a half a tank of diesel. That's three gallons of diesel. What I don't know yet is how much gas this Toro Z Master is going to use to mow the whole property. So I've topped off the tank. We're going to mow the whole thing, come back, fill it back up and see exactly how much fuel it's used. Well, I just finished up and uh, it started raining on me big time. So, uh, I mean, I just finished when it started. It's just gonna pass by. Anyway, I made it back to the barn. So um, we're gonna go ahead and see how much gas I used. Now, like I said before, I filled this tank 100% to the top before I started. And this is a five gallon can. And I filled it all the way to the top. We'll pour it in and we'll see what's left. Right there. All right. I've got about one gallon left. Okay, so here we go. The entire yard, the whole probably five plus acres, mowed it all, ready for this, in one hour and 45 minutes. No lie. One hour and 45 minutes I did my entire property, which would normally take me four and a half hours with the Kubota. That's a major advantage, but we're talking fuel. So at current prices, diesel fuel is $4.39 a gallon. So three gallons, that was the $13.17. This took four gallons of gasoline, regular gas, at $3.49 a gallon, that comes to $13.96. So even though this uses more fuel, it gets done so fast that it doesn't use as much as it would if it took four and a half hours, if you understand what I'm saying. So bottom line is it costs about the same for fuel to mow with the Kubota or to mow with this, simply because this gets done in less, way less than half the time. And so final thoughts about these two machines, it's really not a competition. It's more about what one machine does for the other and vice versa. What does having a zero turn mower do for your tractor? Well, it allows it to be more of a tractor. I can take the mower deck off. I can put 
wheel weights on, I can fill the tires, I won't have to worry about how heavy this machine is, whether or not it's going to damage my lawn. I could put spacers on it, I can do whatever I want to do to this tractor to make it more of a tractor. And what can the tractor do for the mower? Well, as a tractor, it can fill in holes, it can make the ground smoother, it can help the zero turn to do its job better as well. Obviously, the zero turn mows way better than the Kubota BX. So when you're buying a Kubota BX and you're trying to decide, should I get the mower deck or not? Well, I think the mower deck right now as an option goes for around $3,000. Now, the, the Toro, of course, is way more expensive than that, but you can get a decent zero turn mower for that price range. So you really have to think about it. Now, do I want to own two machines? That's another thing. You've got storage. You've got maintenance. There's a lot of things to consider if you're going to buy two large machines. you got to keep them somewhere. So if I could only own one machine, which would it be? Well, obviously it would be the Kubota BX because it does so much more. When I bought this machine originally, I bought it to mow the yard and to plow snow. It did both of those things and way more. Now, the fact that it can do so many more things and it's the Swiss Army knife of tractors is also part of the reason that I bought the zero turn mower because I want to be able to use all these features on this small tractor with this narrow footprint without having that big 60 inch mower deck in my way. So if you want that, you've got to take it off and then you got to put it back on. And that is a major problem for me. I just don't like doing it. I injured my arm moving it one time. I'd rather this just be a tractor. And when I want a tractor, I have a tractor. And when I want to mow, I have a mower. So, like I said, this is not a competition between the two of them. This is informative, and I hope you got a lot of good information out of this video, and it'll uh, help you if you're deciding on trying to buy a new machine. So, I appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you next time when I am doing more stuff. See you then.